Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to set properly different ArcSite components. Uh, like, uh, for example, in this video we'll talk about uh, ArcSite Logger, we'll talk about the ArcSite Enterprise Security Manager. So, um, here we'll see how to create a forwarding connector. So, our destination, like uh, our ArcSite ESM, can receive only uh, selected type of events and from ESM we can create a rule as well in order to correlate after that those events. Now um, Logger of course is a um, you know, log management solution that is optimized for extremely high event throughput, efficient long-term storage and rapid data analysis. Logger receives and store events, um, basically supports as well search, retrieval and reporting and can optionally forward selected events. Um, so, essentially, Logger compresses raw data, but can always retrieve unmodified data on demand for, for example, for forensic quality litigation uh, data and uh, different purposes. So, Logger does not require any other ArcSight products, but as you can see, for example, it can be integrated as well with ArcSight Enterprise Security Manager. So, it receives an, uh, events, essentially, and can forward syslog and uh, log file events created by a, a wide variety of hardware and software network products. Uh, Logger also interoperates with ArcSight uh, Manager, uh, just like, as I said, uh, it's shown here in, in this image. Um, but uh, again, a typical uh, use of Logger is to collect, for example, firewall events or other data and then to forward a subset of data to uh, the ArcSight Enterprise Security Manager for real-time monitoring and for correlation, um, just like uh, I'm showing right now. So Logger can uh, store the raw, for example, firewall data for compliance or for service level, you know, agreement purposes, but it can as well forward um, a selected number of events uh, to another active destination, just like I'm showing right now. So. In this case, on first place, we have our uh, data source, our firewalls. Then we have an ArcSight smart connector, which collects these events, ArcSight logger, and then the ArcSight ESM manager. So with ArcSight ESM manager, just like I'm showing right now, uh, we can use uh, actually a rule if we want, for example, to uh, correlate the events that we have received from our uh, firewalls. Uh, a normal rule. So uh, we know uh, from one of uh, our previous videos uh, that I've uh, shown here in my channel that uh, only actually, you know, uh, normal rules can trigger uh, an action. They can create a correlation, essentially, uh, event. So here, an action, I'm just going to say action, but uh, we know we have different types of actions that uh, the correlation engine can produce, can execute. Essentially, we have uh, like, uh, you know, we can create cases, we can send notifications, we can populate active lists, uh, session lists, and so on with entries, depending on what do we want to do. So here is the idea. This is what we're going to do, basically. Um, yeah. All right, so here we are. Now, uh, this is a Windows Server operating system. Previously, I have uh, exported uh, my um, certificate from the ArcSight Enterprise Security Manager. Uh, if you want to know more on how to export your certificate from ArcSight DSM, you can uh, yeah, just consider checking uh, into the administra into the yeah, ArcSight DSM uh, administrator guide. Um, basically, now I'm trying to log in uh, to my logger. It's a little bit slow, but yeah, let's wait a little bit. So here it is. We go under the configuration tab, under data, and then we find our certificates. So uh, we we go under add certificate. All right, and here we are. So, uh, yeah, certificate alias. We have to provide like uh, an alias. In this way, we can differentiate uh, what is the certificate that we're importing. Please match the uh, requested format. Okay, I have to modify a little bit the uh, alias that I have provided. So let me put arcsight underscore ESM. 
same thing okay uh, so uh, alphanumeric uh, okay so a hyphen arc site hyphen and then ESM so click on save now it should be it should be okay Uh, so yeah, as I said, from the administrator guide on page 55, you can uh, find information on how to export actually your uh, certificates from the ArcSight ESM, because uh, you're going to need them if you want to um, create a destination uh, within your logger. Uh, you're going to need your certificates. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to establish. Uh, a secure communication between logger and ArcSight ESM. So let's wait a little bit. It takes like a couple of uh, seconds, like 20, 30 seconds, something like that. All right. And yeah, here it is. So all certificates are going to appear automatically. And um, as well, uh, now if I scroll where it is, it's actually, it should be up. Uh, yeah, it's actually here. Do you see ArcSight ESM? Okay, perfect. So we've imported successfully the certificate uh, from our Enterprise Security Manager. Now let's uh, let's create a forwarder. Actually, this is uh, one attempt that I've made earlier to create a forwarder, but uh, I'm just gonna delete it. So I'm going under add and from here, the first thing that I have to do is just to specify like what name do you want to give to your forwarder. So um, just pick, uh, you know, a, um, a name that essentially is going to describe what kind of forwarder do you want to create, like failed logins forwarder. So uh, I know that I'm receiving some uh, failed logins from my test alert smart connector. That's why I'm going to choose this name. So essentially the events that I receive in logger, I want to forward them towards the ArcSight DSM in order to correlate them after that with the rule. All right. So here you can specify your query and be careful under query here. We mean like um, your conditions against which the events are going to be evaluated. So we want to say new condition here, for example, and I have checked earlier the events that I want to forward and uh, I know what conditions, um, I mean, I want to specify. You can do this as well before starting this, but I can say something like category, category behavior, and then operator, I can say equals, and then I can say authentication verify. Perfect. Now enter, close. Yeah, actually, I have to click on close before. And I'm going to add another condition now. So I'm going to say category outcome. OK, and operator equals. then my condition will be failure because I'm going to be looking for some failed logins, right? So this is the outcome of the event. Mm, yeah, those events have been already normalized. So those are uh, CEF format type of events. And yeah, this is how my query is going to look like. Click on save. Perfect. Now uh, let's check. Uh, you can actually pick from already created filters as well, just like it's shown here, ESM destination. Actually, oh yeah, first, uh, you know what? I forgot to create a destination. Okay, so let's go under the configuration tab and then ESM destinations. So this is from where you have to add a destination. Uh, basically, you're going to give a name. So 
this is going to be, uh, for example, the host name of the ArcSight Enterprise Security Manager. In my, ca in my case, the name is esm1.acme.com. So just a second, let me type it. All right. And then connector name. So I'm going to call it failed logins, something like that. So let me get back again. All right, at, so name again, I'm going to repeat esm1.acme.com. All right. Logger, location, IP host. So I'm going to type the IP address directly. Port, it remains uh, 8443. And then username admin and dark site missing connector location. All right, I thought that this is not a mandatory field, but uh, yeah, just specify as well like a connector location. This essentially will create like a folder and then it's going to place under it uh, your, uh, your smart connector, your forwarding connector essentially. Uh, and then on the location, just, uh, you know, type something so it's not empty. There was a problem failed to add destination. The specific manager name does not match the name in the manager certificate, do you see? So you need to type then the uh, host name and uh, not the IP address. So esm1.acme.com. Let's try with the, uh, with the host name. Because it's... Uh, not recon recognizing the IP address, but that's not a problem. So let's try to add it now. Perfect. Okay, looks like we have an active uh, ESM destination now. All right, so let's see. Okay, this is the forwarder, so we select the esm1.dragme.com as ESM destination, as you can see now we have it, so save. And yeah, here it is, actually we have just created the forwarder, so yeah, alright. Let me show you now the test alert smart connector. This is how it looks like. So this one is forwarding events uh, towards logger. And then the forwarder that we've created will forward uh, events towards Arc's ideas. Okay, this is the installation directory. I'll show you under bin. Run agent setup. We have only one active destination. So as I said, this is our logger. Okay. Modify parameters. Add or modify destination. Here you will see that we have only logger as a primary destination. We don't have Arcs IDSM. Okay. We just want to forward a subset, so a small amount of events and only a particular type of events towards Arcs IDSM. events that match this query right here. Category behavior, authentication verify, and category outcome failure. Okay. 
this is the query that we've used under our uh, forwarder, sorry. Yeah. So we have some matches. Those events will be sent uh, towards our KDSM. I will open the SM console. Uh, let me close that. Okay, active channel. I can create one active channel just to display those events. Or I can just go under connectors. I'll look for the forwarding connector. And you can see here that it says running. It's been placed under forwarders. So this is like a, a subfolder and under it, as you can see, we can find uh, our uh, forwarding connector installed. Right click, create channel with filter and yeah, looks like the smart connector uh, works, works fine. Okay. Events per second. And yeah, all those events that I can see within my manager are actually events coming uh, from here, from Logger. All those different illegal user logon failures and so on and so on. You can see as well the agent name. I have added uh, here an additional column and it says failed uh, login. Okay, um, so yeah, category behavior, it's authentication verify and um, the outcome is failure as I've showed you as well earlier. Now, um, if I open here in the um, logger, I'm going back under my forwarder just to show you once again the query. So this is the query against which the events are evaluated and then forwarded towards ArxIDSM. Okay, so here I have created a, a rule uh, in one of my previous videos, uh, like a brute force login attempt type of uh, rule, uh, which is uh, constantly looking in real time for uh, some um, failed logins. And as well, I have uh, specified an action here to create a case. So whenever uh, the rule is triggered, basically, uh, the action should be to create an internal case. In this way, uh, me and as well, for example, my colleagues from the SOC can see that uh, this rule has been uh, triggered and uh, they can start investigating the correlation event and as well the base events that were the cause uh, for triggering the rule. So, uh, all right, now, here I have uh, already uh, actually enabled the rule, probably you saw. Um, and yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so let's go under uh, rules, under real time rules. Okay, uh, actually, my Brute force login attempt has been already deployed under the real time rules. Uh, and yeah, all I gotta do now is just to wait for some uh, matches for some cases. And here they are. Actually, the rule has been triggered. So automatically, 
uh, I have some cases coming. I'm going to disable the rule because I don't want my system to be floated. <laughs> All right. Okay. So since I'm using on every threshold, that's why the system has created uh, plenty of uh, cases <laughs> showing me that uh, actually my rule has been triggered um, several, probably, uh, yeah, tens and hundreds of times. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, just to get an idea about how the rule works uh, with the events actually that were forwarded by ArcSight Logger. So thanks again for watching guys and see you in the next video.